Sooner Scoop HD. All right, good afternoon. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, game week again. I uh, got Kent State coming in here. Um, another bowl team, a team that played for their conference championship a year ago and are picked to win their division again this year. They've done a great job, uh, Coach Lewis and his staff, at uh, developing their team and uh, got good players um, on both sides of the ball. Um, obviously, I'm a defensive guy, so I look at their, their offense first. And uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, they lost a quarterback last year. He's with somebody in the NFL now. No, but they got great skill. Uh, we feel like they've got a couple of receivers. They're NFL quality receivers, uh, excellent backs. Um, they can. Uh, uh, they got great strength. Run behind their pads. Well, they got one of them's 250. Uh, they've got they've got good depth at their skill. Um, good tight ends, and. Um, I have a little familiarity. It's a Syracuse style of <coughs> of offense. Uh, Coach Lewis used to be at Syracuse, and so they're running some of the same things, and they've certainly evolved uh, since his time there a few years ago. Um, uh, they're going to tempo you uh, philosophically. That's a big part of who they are, and to make make you defend every patch of grass uh, defensively on on uh, on their defense. Uh, probably familiar with. They have a new coordinator. Uh, and they, they're employing the Iowa State style of defense. Uh, and uh, so uh, everybody's probably a little bit familiar with what that looks like, doing a good job. Uh, played a really good looking Washington team, just evaluating the film. Uh, Washington on both sides of the ball uh, looked long and athletic and uh, really uh, did a nice job. Uh, had some timely turnovers um, where the, uh, the game uh, that was a good back and forth battle um, got away from them based on those turnovers. I look at the Kent State team a year ago, they opened up at Texas A&M, uh, the same A&M team that uh, a lot of people have in their top five, top ten for sure this year, that beat Alabama last year, and, and it's ten to three, um, you know, with a few minutes to go in the third quarter in, uh, in College Station a year ago. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna fight you with everything they got. One thing I've Watching the tape, I love how hard they play and compete. Uh, regardless of the score, uh, man, they play incredibly hard. Chase the ball uh, on defense and on offense, man, they're going to keep coming at you and throwing haymakers. So i uh, got a lot of respect for how they play. Uh, obviously, we know they're, they're staying in Tulsa this week uh, to try to save them from uh, – uh, I look at it from how hard it is on the body um, and on those players, you know, uh, getting on and off of planes. And that, that takes several hours to get an operation like that going. So smart by them uh, to make a pit stop here and uh, practicing in Tulsa and will come over uh, later in the week. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, open it up for questions. Brent, you were able to play 10 true freshmen on Saturday. What's it like just to see those young players get their first taste of college football? I wanted to ask you about Javante Barnes and just what you see out of him. And is this a sign to incoming freshmen that if you are if you prove yourself, you can get in the games early? Yeah, no, it, it was great to watch those guys. Um, most of them, not all of them, but most of them came at mid-year. Um, so uh, they had a, a spring ball under their belt, and uh, that's a tremendous advantage, obviously. Uh, but you know, it's hard to keep guys, you know, for five years. Um, we, this is a developmental game, and we want to be a developmental program. And there's some guys that aren't quite there, but the ones that um, had an opportunity to get in the game, that was a lot of fun to watch them uh, play and compete and uh, expect them to continue to get better. Javante, uh, you saw how explosive he was uh, uh, the moment he touched the ball. It just looked different uh, probably for everybody. And um, as he showed in the spring, uh, he's he's got uh, – great maturity to him. Uh, the game isn't too hard for him. And uh, he, was, he was a little bit banged up with a hamstring in the early part of, of camp. So it, uh, that, that didn't uh, help him. But as we know, he's got great instincts. He's, he's a big guy. Uh, again, same thing, plays behind his pads very well. Uh, really, really uh, explosive and got a great, great demeanor about him too from a, a freshman standpoint, very mature. But I feel like there's a lot of uh, good mature kids in this in this uh, 
excuse me, in this freshman class. And um, that obviously uh, gives them a leg up in regards to contributing. They can just manage everything, being away from home for the first time, new schemes, new languages, the demands of school, practice, social life, all of those things. It's not an easy thing to manage, whether you're old or young. And, and uh, you know, we've got a, a good group of young guys that um, have a propensity to do exactly that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brent, I want to take you back a little bit with this one. Obviously, tempo being such a big uh, talking point this week with y'all and, and Kent State. What was it like uh, 20 years ago when Kevin Wilson uh, got here and, and brought that tempo? You're talking about the defensive side, both in preparing your guys for teams you might face that, that run that tempo and, and also just managing the game. Yeah, 20 years ago, um, tempo was a thing, but people had a fastball package. So they might run like three plays, and then that's all you did. And so you, you had to have a fastball package. It might be three straight plays as fast as they can go, but if you smashed them, then they, they got away from it. And obviously, the, the new thing with that was it was as constant as they wanted it. Um, they did it from under the center a lot, too. And then they would do multiple uh, personnel groupings with the same or m multiple sets with the same personnel grouping. So, one, it couldn't give you an opportunity to sub. And two, um, you got 12 personnel, one back and two tight ends and two receivers. Normally you get 12 sets, so you do just a few things. But what they would do would get into a four wide, uh, like a four wide receiver look, you know, with, I can't remember, Gresham on one side and I don't know if it's Brody or whoever else, you know, on the other. and. And uh, or 11 sets with 12 and things of that nature. So really, they had a lot of depth to what they did. Uh, and then I remember lots of conversations like, hey, man, you could go tempo and like you could go four verticals. And like, whoa, you, you, can you do that? You know, what about protection? And, and I remember those conversations well. And uh, but everybody does it now. So there's been it's evolved. Uh, but uh, uh, I like those old days. We literally talked about fastball today you know we were bringing up uh different teams and their flavors of what they would do they put the formation into the boundary run the quick toss or something like that or and it was like a really tough thing you know back in the day and things have gotten a little more um intricate and and complicated now more uh than it than it was then so uh but it's good you know to me i again talking about the, the tempo and i started yesterday's team meeting like you know, Dylan Gabriel has never made a tackle and will never make a tackle for us. <coughs> and Marvin Mims isn't going to go cover, you know, the wide wide receiver for us and, uh, you know, stay on top of a go ball. And, uh, you know, Braden Willis is never going to sack anyone for us. The offense doesn't have anything to do with the defense and, and vice versa. That's got to be our mindset first and foremost. Uh, our job is to stop people. You know, the way to get off the field is you go three and out. You know, you be more precise and you be more exact in what you're doing and uh, do a, an effective job playing tough and physical and great uh, communication and great fundamentals and you get off the field. And that's my expectation, that we get to a point where we're, you know, we should have a goal and a vision for leading the country in three and outs. And, and that's where you get 11 guys playing together. And uh, we're, we got a long ways to go to do that. And um, But I was really pleased with uh, you know, a lot of the things from uh, from Saturday, but I didn't like our efficiency at times. There's a couple of drives that, um, you know, we weren't as efficient as a collectively as an, as a, as 11 guys need to be uh, to get off the field and make layups and, uh, you know, things of that nature. So, um, you know, you didn't ask me about defense, but that we did open up yesterday's uh, meeting talking about exactly that, you know. Uh, you don't need to worry about what's going on offense. Your job is to stop people, period. And, uh, you know, stop making excuses. And that, not that they were, but I want to make sure that that narrative isn't, doesn't get inside of our walls. I think it's important that, you know, you have a tough-mindedness about you. You know what? A lot of bad stuff's going to happen. Your job is to respond. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Brent, along those lines, uh, I know it's just one game of the season, but whether it's the tempo of the offense or the way you guys defended the run, do you feel like you had you found some things to build on from that game in terms of creating an identity on both sides of the ball, or do you feel like that's something that kind of happens throughout the year? I, I mean, I think, you know, it was a start for every, just for our team, for this season, for 128, for our defense, for our offense, for our kicking game. You know, and we knew that going in, that regardless of what happens, this is going to be a start. This is, whether it's a depth chart or, or it's a result, this is where we're at and, and this is what we got to do moving forward. And the expectation is that there's, again, a focus of daily improvement, uh, recognize the good, um, focus on what wasn't good and how it needs to improve and how we could be better. And whether, again, it's all the things that uh, lead to, you know, a bad play or a bad series, you know, to happen. So uh, penalties is one, right? And um, a positioning is another. But you know, there's a ton of that was really good. You know, I thought we were aggressive. I uh, thought our guys played with confidence and assuredness, and that comes from preparation. You know, there's a level of anticipation because of uh, a lot of preparation that goes into it. And so I don't think that our guys were caught off guard with anything that they saw. And um, so that was pleasing. And again, I like the, the physicalness of, of the defense as a whole. Thought it was, was good. And I thought our positioning for the most part was, was really good. Uh, I didn't like, uh, there's, they had two plays of I think maybe 24 and 28 yards, give or take. And um, we won the explosive play battle. Our offense had eight plays of 20 plus yards and defense gave up two. And uh, that's a, you know, and you win that, and you win the turnover mar margin, you're going to win probably 99% of your games. And, uh, but uh, there's plenty to, to correct and improve on. I think our guys showed that um, they've trained incredibly hard. Uh, we had very few issues um, when it came to uh, cramping and, and fatigue. I thought our guys played really strong uh, for, the, for the duration of the game. We played, you know, uh, an entire three deep on defense in particular. And we got to play a few more guys on offense uh, as well as we develop our team. That's how you develop is you got to play. And I want, I want morale uh, to be at an all-time high. And if guys are putting in the work every day, and, uh, and there's a lot that goes into that, you know, it's, it's a very challenging daily schedule for everybody involved in our program, whether you're a, a walk-on, a red shirt, or a six-year senior. It's a very challenging day-to-day -day grind for six months. And so uh, the best reward you can give guys are play guys that deserve to play, and that's how we're going to develop our team uh, foundationally over the long haul. And I, I don't want it to be where the, the ones are in there, you know, with three minutes to go and we're up by 28, you know, because we don't want to give something up. Guys need to play and develop. And, uh, you know, transfer portal's an issue. You know, lose guys. And uh, we need to develop depth. You know, competition brings out the best in everybody. So uh, my job is to make sure the coaches aren't afraid, uh, you know, of what a guy may not do, uh, what he doesn't know. Uh, there's plenty of mistakes by guys that are playing and starting, you know. Uh, so uh, some of our best guys maybe didn't play their best. And uh, so don't. You can't, you can't have it, you know, both ways. You know, you're worried about a guy that is in a too deep and he doesn't hardly play, uh, but the starters out there are not playing great. So, and you're still winning by 30 some points. So we got, we got to play more guys if they deserve to play. And, and so on both sides of the ball, but I was really, um, you know, I, I was pleased with the, with the guys that played on defense. You know, again, we played a bunch of guys and um, we're developing, again, uh, a team. But most of all, you know, as you go throughout the season, through the ups and the downs, the highs and lows, the success and the failure, you'll develop an identity through, through all that. It's Fred Berry on the right side. Yeah, bro, the, uh, the president's voted in a 12-team playoff last week. Not sure when it's going to start yet, but what are your thoughts on the expansion of the playoff? Is it good for OU? Is it good for the Big 12? Is it good eventually for the SEC? I'm going to go back just what I, when, how I answered the, the scheduling. I'm um, good. That's great. Good. <laughs> All right, and like nobody's asking me what I think, and so I literally, I, I'm very sincere when I say this, and I say it with all due respect, I could care less. Uh, I really could care less. I don't even know what that means, you know, but I do know it doesn't have anything to do with today's practice. It has nothing to do with Kent State, and um, 
I don't really know what it means in the big picture other than more teams are getting in. And, I, and I'm sure there's a narrative that, well, that means there's going to be more teams when that happens. Just say it happens in, say, three years and we're in the SEC. Well, more teams in the SEC uh, will be able to get in. I guess that's what they, they might say, but I, I really don't know. And uh, like I said, I don't really have an opinion on it whatsoever. Um, I love college football. I'm a loyalist at heart. I love the bowl system. Um, I just love that reward. There's an innocence about college football. Um, I don't want it to be professionalized, whatever that means, and commercialized, professionalized. Uh, there's some things going on in NIL. I think that's there's a lot of really good things uh, with NIL, and there's always a bad side of it too. And but I try to look at the at the good, uh, not the bad. If it goes to playoffs, I always thought that that the um, <clears throat> the NCAA basketball tournament was just like who doesn't love that? Uh, that's cool. And who do we pull for? Loyola Chicago, right? Or, you know, St. Bonaventure, you know, somebody like that, don't you? Yes. Y'all human, right? All right. Pull for, the, for, pull for the underdog. So maybe it gives, again, you know, a chance for people. I think that's good for the game. I, I, don't, I, I don't like having all the same teams in it all the time either, you know. So does it, does it give somebody else an opportunity again? Maybe. I don't know what that looks like. I honestly don't. And like I said, I don't – I. I've got my hands on this program, and, and I'm just literally trying to be great today at this practice. Stay on that side with Jerry. You were mentioning when Brian asked about when Kevin was here in the mid, mid to late 2000s, that, that version of that offense. Uh, I, I recall that offensive line as not just being one of the strongest from that, that era, but the fittest, which was important because of the way that, that was run. I want to ask how Schmitty in that regard has affected this group of offensive linemen and whether it's just as important now than it was then. No question. It leads to, again, uh, we, we talk about it all the time, to have competitive stamina, you know, to play the hardest, the longest, the toughest. And, uh, and as much as anything, Schmitty's had a tremendous effect. You know, and I think he, the number one place is the mindset. Uh, and so all that goes into that through um, every day, uh, uh, you know, push for excellence and the, the work that they put in and the confidence that you gain from that. Uh, even if it's sometimes it's the placebo effect. Good. <laughs> However you get it done. But, but uh, you know, I think he's, he's had tremendous influence on, on all of our team, our entire team, but uh, the bigs in particular. You know, they'll feel, they feel more uh, equipped and empowered than, than they ever have. Okay. Over here, Bob Rispillo. Yeah, Brent, uh, first, any update on Daniel Parker? Uh, expect him back here this week. And yeah, he had the sniffles last week. There were a couple of kickoff returns from Billy Bowman. Mm -hmm. A few yards in the end zone, took it out anyway. Is that sort of the aggressive mindset you're going to have on special teams too? I mean, we would like to have that. I mean, that was that's that's part of our philosophy. And uh, Billy's a very uh, dynamic football player, and and he had a chance to score uh, for sure on, on one. Uh, uh, if we get one one guy to do something a little bit better, and um, so Billy is uh, again very dynamic, and we got a lot of really good dynamic uh, skill guys. So, uh, but overall, that that aligns, you know, uh, with who we want to be, and an opportunity to score, create field position, create a big play, uh, create momentum. And you can do that in all three phases without question. Brent, you had a little adversity in the offensive line with Wanya out, and you had to move a tackle and things like that. You also had a hot day, and so you played some guys early. How did you feel like that group played as a whole after you know, you know it's all said and done, and you had to go through all those things in that first game? Well, again, I think you look at the you know uh, the score and the game control at the end of the day. I think is important, and um, getting up twenty-one nothing. It happened in like. 62 seconds, uh, I think is a great thing. You know, some people, oh man, you worry about scoring so fast? No. Uh, you know what it does? It puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the opponent. Whether you got to go out there and play again or not. You know how to get, get off the field, go three and out. You know, play better. You know, play with better fundamentals and technique and, uh, you know, all those things. So uh, they were solid, you know, um, as a group solid. And you know, we got to be, we got to finish better. You know, just if you said, what's the one area or where uh, do you need to improve it? Just we got to finish, finish plays better uh, from from snap to whistle uh, with a tougher mindset. 
and uh, uh, be a little cleaner in some areas and protection and in the run game both. And But finishing guys off, I think there's more to be had. Uh, whether you give uh, the quarterback a little more time and keep him cleaner, uh, or again, you're, you're finishing guys off on that second and that third level where you give an opportunity for, uh, to create more big plays. Mm-hmm. Coach, I was going to ask about Parker, but two other guys unavailable to play the other day mm-hmm. were Sawcheck, the young running back, and of course Wanye. Uh, can, will Sawcheck was available. We just, you know, he didn't he didn't suit up, but uh, he he was fine. Everything's okay. great with him. Right. Yeah, okay. uh, and uh, Wanye, we're still trying to work through uh, some an off field issue, and expect him back sooner rather than later. Well, on Wanye. If or when that gets resolved, is your philosophy, will, will he come back and be immediately competitive to get into that lineup and play, or do you do you have a philosophy that says, nah, you're going to have to wait a while and uh, maybe get a break to get back in there? Uh, yeah, I expect him to get right back in there um, based on, you know, what the issue is. And he's been practicing every day, uh, so he'll, he'll, he'll jump right back in there like riding a bike. So, um, I think you you treat each individual case like it needs to be treated. Far left side, John Hoover. Yeah, Brent. Um, coaches have told us for years that you make your biggest improvement, typically speaking, from week one to week two. Can you kind of describe the process of how that works, why that works, why you expect maybe improvements in week two? And you mm-hmm. mentioned a couple of areas. Are there any others? I've only been a head coach for one game, so I don't, I don't have any experience about that improvement from one to two uh, as a football team. Um, but, I mean, I think there's, there's um, first game anxiousness, jitters, if you will. Um, I think that you're finding out what guys can do when the, when the lights are bright, you know, game one. And uh, so you make some adjustments. Uh, but you get into a, the, the flow of a season, you know, you're – even your week leading up to the first game is a slightly different than once you get into the season itself. And um, so you make a, a small modifications, but, but at the end of the day, getting into a, a normal season routine, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of adjustment, you know, and for the players more than anything, but the coaches too, you know. Uh, sometimes when you have less time, that's a good thing as a coach, so you don't overthink things. And so when you get into the season itself, you know, you've, uh, you know, you're limited on the, the amount of time, you know, that you have. And again, the out of season, you have unlimited time with the players uh, and unlimited time to you draw whatever up for the next day's practice and whatnot. So everything's just a little bit more condensed and a little bit more intentional. And, uh, and again, we hope to see that, you know, rapid improvement, you know, week to week. Uh, but I think the challenge is is learning the new DNA of the opponent. It is about Oklahoma. You know, when you play, that's what we, we talk about. You know, the man in the mirror, don't beat Oklahoma. You know, we had some penalties and things of that nature. We got to clean a lot of a little stuff up uh, for us to, you know, to make the kind of improvement that we need to make. You know, uh, we, we take points off the board with a, a penalty on third down. You know, we're extending drives on a fourth down, got a great stop. Uh, potentially sitting in front of us and we give up a field goal on a fourth down stop uh, with a with a, a holding penalty you know on a guy that uh, you didn't need to hold and and so uh, again there, there there's there, there's you know a, a turnaround of they, they had a field goal on the on the drive we had the the, uh, the holding penalty and and who knows at worst case it was a field goal so a six point swing right there uh, with with you know things that we can control so uh, the cleanliness of how you play, I think that uh, our intention and hope is that we, we get better that way. Um, but just, I think, as much as anything, getting in uh, the, the routine, getting comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a linebacker guy. Can you talk about Danny Stutzman and just, I guess, his growth from where he is, where he was when he got here until now? And I guess he's one of the leaders on the, on the defense now for you. Just his mental maturity, uh, and also our Mason Thomas. He's a different type of edge rusher for you guys, uh, a lot more lighter. Can you talk about <clears throat> where he is now uh, from when he got to Oklahoma to, to uh, obviously after the first game? Yeah, Danny has had tremendous growth. I think he's, he's matured. 
um, as much as I've seen anything. He and his dad and I were talking after the game, and uh, we talked about a conversation that Danny and I had and sometime in February, and uh, it was just he and I uh, in, the, in the hallway somewhere. And I asked him, are you ever going to watch tape? Are you ever going to come ask for a playbook? Uh, you you want to be a good player? So we had one of those. He was like, whoa, where's this guy coming from? Uh, we had one of those talks. And uh, because I know Danny's a guy that um, he's got tremendous instincts. He's a really good football player. But in order to tap into, the, you know, into you know your potential and really realize that potential, man, you, there's a lot of work that goes on uh, beyond what's required. And to me, he was a guy that had relied on uh, instincts and toughness and the, the love to play, to play pretty good. And so a challenge to being, becoming a leader and being um, uh, taking control of your career. You got a small window, you know, the hourglass is flipped all the way over and you're on the clock. And like, you can't get back these days. And uh, so, um, I, you know, new staff, new system, new language, you know, when are you gonna learn it? And are you going to try to be a person of, of excellence or just, you know, try to get by on, on talent? So to me, he's that, that um, very open and honest, uh, raw conversation uh, where we challenged him, I think really uh, helped him uh, from that time on. I mean, or showing up to, uh, you know, he showed up one of our first meetings and uh, he, don't have, he don't have anything to write with, you know. So I'm saying you're like that, you're that good. Uh, you can just remember everything, you know, and uh, he's in a long line of guys that didn't show up with something to write, so it's not just him. And uh, so we got that fixed. And, and then again, I've just seen this uh, more than incremental improvement with him and the more success he's had. And we've played him at multiple positions because he is a guy that, you know, locates the ball well, uh, just has a knack for um, finding the football. Uh, but he's really taken off. Really super proud of him. He's strong. He's he's uh, confident. He's got good health, uh, and he's just scratching the surface on what he can be. He he. Where, where I like he's at is that he remembers the bad plays, and he goes and you want to praise him, and he immediately brings up uh, the plays that he needed to do uh, better on, and that's what the the good ones are are never satisfied. And uh, he graded out in the mid 80s and nine tackles, two PBUs, and a hurry first start ever, that's pretty solid. And, um, but he was still hungry and edgy about the things he didn't do well, and I like that, you know, because that's where, that's where I am too. But I don't want to not recognize the, you know, the, the work that he's put in. And then R. Mason Thomas, again, he literally turned 18, you know, 10 days ago. And so he's a, he's a broad-shouldered, high-hipped, uh, long-armed guy that um, has got a tremendous frame. He can fly. He's um, incredibly mature beyond his years. Uh, just got a great focus to him, but he, he comes from a winning program, back-to-back uh, -back state champions uh, at Cardinal Gibbons there in Fort Lauderdale. And he knows how to win. He expects to win. He's got a lot of uh, tremendous habits from a maturity standpoint. His work habits, his study habits, uh, his social, cir social circle is tight. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get in all the riffraff like a lot of young guys. He get away from home for the first time. So, um, the game's easy for him. He plays very fast. He's um, got tremendous strength and power and explosiveness. Even though he's a 230 guy, and he's got you know he's got a frame. He'll be a 260 guy. Um, you know before it's all said and done. And uh, you know he's gonna be hell on wheels. Uh, that's what I know. He's he's got a great great future. He'll go second row, Andy Staples. Yeah, Brent, when you were a coordinator and, and trying to figure out what you were going to be as a head coach, how did you decide what your offensive philosophy was? Um, I really didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about what I was going to be like as a head coach because I didn't really spend any time doing that. I'll be just very frank and honest. Um, uh, you know, to me, I've preached this to myself and to my players I always keep your head down and just work just grind and if you do that you don't have time for any other distractions and so I wasn't that guy trying to put together a portfolio or make connections or go to a seminar on how to become a head coach I just didn't um, I just wanted to be good at what I was doing and just didn't feel like um, uh, I don't know I just uh, I just didn't so um, as far as I'm you know who's hard to stop you know what's uh, how how can you uh, what what's the product look like that's going to um, uh, attract 
you know, great recruits, you know, skill guys, quarterback, great running backs, um, offensive linemen that got to learn how to pass pro. And um, so, um, and then a, an aggressive philosophy that aligns with mine. So that's, those are some things and things that, again, uh, intricately, schematically, that are uh, difficult to defend. There's a lot of different flavors. It's all ice cream, right? All offense, it's all offense, right? It's all ice cream, but there's different flavors of it, right? You got Neapolitan, you got, uh, you know, Rocky Road, you got vanilla, chocolate, you know, and, and so Jeff's one of those. I don't know what he is, uh, but, you know, he's, uh, he's a, again, a, a great person too, and I think that was important too. You find the right fit for you, and uh, didn't have to be an Oklahoma guy, but Jeff's um, incredibly mature, got a great presence to him, super humble, but confident. Uh, aggressive, um, very articulate and detailed in, in everything that he does, a uh, great person, and um, just a tremendous, tremendous fit. You know, he's college roommates and teammates with, with some of our guys, and uh, so it was a great fit for me, and uh, both in scheme and in, uh, you know, who he is as a, as a husband and a father. You talked a little bit ago about telling the defense that your offense goes fast and an excuse for getting mm -hmm. points. How did you guys, at Clemson, you guys were kind of the first to really be dominant on defense while you were also going that fast. How did you convince those players that you could do that? Same way. You know, don't, don't let the excuses. More sacrifice, less excuses. That kind of a mindset. And um, just basically what I said to y'all today and what I said to them, you know, yesterday. And there, nobody's making excuses in our in our – uh, room, but I just wanted to make sure there was no narrative, uh, no chit chat going on, and uh, and then the next thing you know, it's you know now you're you're doing this, and we're not going to do that. And uh, you know, for us to again continue to grow and develop, man, we 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 control uh, the environment. You know, that's got to be our mindset, and and so we got to get our guys to play cohesively together. And again, I always talk about giving the ball back to the offense as fast as possible. You want to, you want to, you know, overwhelm somebody and dominate somebody. Keep giving that offense the ball back uh, as fast as you can. And so, uh, we don't want to. And I know there's some different uh, metrics that are out there in uh, how many drives you defend and you know points per play and all that. And that stuff does matter. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, you know, I'm looking at game control and. Uh, I love not letting somebody get into a rhythm, and I want to stop everything. And that's the mindset. And but I'm also very conscious of the players I have and this and, and what they're good at and what they're not very good at. And so I got a great, uh, you know, a platform to see that every single day. And then we're trying to develop our team um, so that we're not limited, and we try to attack weaknesses every day and help guys get better. Uh, but you know. Uh, we, we have a very uh, intimate understanding of who we are, what we want to be, and, and how do we get them where we want them to go. And so, you know, you don't put a square peg through a round circle. If a guy's a, if a guy, uh, uh, you know, defensive end is, you know, he can't set the edge and, and they're running the counter tray with 600 pounds coming around there, then you put him out there on third down. Don't put him out there on first and 10. Uh, if a corner is, uh, not very good at, at press technique, then don't play him in press. <laughs> How many more times you got to get annihilated for you to know this guy can't do it, you know? And so uh, I, I think that, you know, there's, that's why we have a lot to what we do. And if anybody looked at us, we're, we do have a, a, a variety of things, but yeah, you itch where it scratches. And um, again, you, you know, this is year one, all right? We weren't, we weren't like that in year one at Clemson. Uh, you know, we improved from whatever they were the year before I got there, and we made good improvement year one uh, from the beginning of the year to the end. Uh, I was miserable that first half of the year because we weren't where we, I wanted us to be, and we slowly, really about mid-year, started, started getting better. And then in 13, we got, we got better, you know. Uh, first game at Clemson, played Auburn, beat them. Last game of that first year, beat LSU. First game the next year in 13, beat Georgia. The last game that year in the Orange Bowl, beat Ohio State. Okay? And then in 14, we led the country in 13, 14 categories. And um, then, but it was a, you know, it's development. You know, that was a group of guys, that freshmen and sophomore that, that first year that, you know, bought in and worked and grinded it up and, uh, and put the work in. And, and again, we developed a, 
a philosophy on how we're going to practice. We got to practice more physical, you know, and uh, you got you to put more time in, you know. Some of my frustration, I, our commitment wasn't where it needed to be early on. Uh, in that first year and you know where's everybody at nobody's showing up and watching like chasing their dreams you can't chase it by just showing up you know with what's required you gotta go above and beyond it takes a, a different level of commitment you know and uh, some guys believe that you can just get better by showing up every day uh, or you could be great by just showing up you know it's like the coach just showing up to game day. You know, every week I'm just going to show up on game day and I'm going to get better. That isn't how it works. So, uh, again, a lot of it's just developing the mindset and the level of commitment and, guys, you know, creating a, an environment where guys have a sense of desperation to do their job and to do it well. And uh, But also not overcomplicate things. You're teaching them the game of football. I think the better they understand football, not just, you know, uh, memorizing their assignment, like understand the game, not just the what, but the why, the when, the how, uh, and the guys around them. It just, it, it really does. And that's what I was really pleased. We've been working really hard to try to uh, develop that um, uh, awareness uh, with our guys. And I'm, I'm really, I'm talking about defense here. Uh, you know, so when I say our guys, I'm talking about the guys on defense. Um, you, that's why you, the reason you got to track that inside hit, because you got to, you know, with spoke safety sitting outside of you, or man, you got to get on that outside hip and turn it all back in because everybody, you're the flat defender and there's nobody outside of you. And so, you know, but if you don't, you know, and they need to see it over and over and over and over and over. So we've, we've worked really hard, very diligently at trying to do that and have seen tremendous improvement from where we started in the spring to where we're at now. And again, uh, the hope and the expectation is we continue to you know have that exponential growth but like I said this is game one was a starting point and this is season one and so uh, nobody gets um, uh, that nobody wants it all to happen as fast as uh, you know I want it to uh, but I got to do a good job of having perspective and um, uh, and continue to be a good leader for these guys uh, along with the rest of the staff you know to uh, continue to develop a, again a, a culture and what that looks like and it doesn't just happen overnight and it doesn't even happen in just uh, several months that's something that uh, you know you you it takes whatever amount of time it is and but our guys you know I think having success lends credibility to things that we've asked them to do and I think that's important too uh, that they can see the growth themselves the improvement themselves that creates more buy-in and uh, and then and then you know moving forward you you continue to recruit to that uh, guys that um, they're again I'm if I'm going to recruit something I'm recruiting guys are blue collar and and we got a gr good group right now and and that's that's the focus of you know uh, you know our recruiting department is you know these are I want to find guys that love to play uh, they're always at the locker room you know they're gym rats guys that. Um, have humility. Um, they have a toughness about them. They're a great teammate. They're willing to make sacrifice. Uh, you know, very selfless. You know, guys. I want to. I want to find them. And you don't always find that on a highlight tape. So dig a little deeper. You know, ask the right questions and um, keep going back and 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 uh, you know, look in the closet under the uh, you know under the mattress. You know, and. Uh, to find the right guys that 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 love it. Coach, you have time for a few more, Coach? Are you asking me? Time? Are you giving time? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Mason Young. Yeah, Brent. Wanted to ask you about the uh, the captain selections. Where where did the idea to have multiple, or different guys each week originate? Have you seen anyone else? Do well, it? I think that uh, you know, as you look at the the season, the season's long, and um, I don't want anybody to get comfortable. So this is a way to promote the opportunity to lead for the week and lead for the season. And at the end of the, you know, the regular season, we'll we'll name permanent captains, and uh, the players will vote on that. And so this is an opportunity to develop leadership on your team. Uh, it's an honor uh, to be, you know, a game captain. And so they're out in front every, uh, you know, every day in front of the team. And uh, so they got to put a little work into being a leader. And again, I'm trying to develop leadership on this team. And the best way to do that is you got to give them work. Uh, you got to give them a task. You got to put them in a leadership position. That's how you get leadership in your team and create buy-in. And so, 
uh, that's what that is. And instead of guys getting comfortable, next thing you know, you know, a month into the season, they're not great leadership. They're not what you want. But now they're the permanent captain for the year. And um, and I don't want that. I don't want that that comfort. I want to develop uh, more leadership in our, our locker room, and uh, and then promote guys for a body of work. At the end of the year, uh, the teammates will will see exactly who's who and what's what. Not at the end of the year, is that a is it permanent captain's floor next season, or is it more of a celebratory thing of the accomplishment? Of uh, the it's team? yeah, I know it's for championship phase. Okay, right side, Eli Letterman. Tyler Guyton, what's struck you about him and his growth since he's gotten here? And even when you do maybe have all five of those starters mm -hmm. available, what kind of role could you see him play? Yeah, he's going to play a big role. Um, hopefully he's he's fighting every day to become a starter. Uh, so that's what my expectation is. But he's had a great attitude, first of all. Uh, very hungry and incredibly humble. Great worker. Uh, that's He's created this opportunity for himself by his, his work, his body of work every day. I, that's one of the things I love about him. He's low maintenance, and uh, you know he wants to be a great player. And in terms of his versatility, can you see him anywhere but those two tackles? I mean, he's very, he's he's powerful. Um, he's super long. You know, he's six foot seven, and um, uh, he's lean, but he's he can really bend and move his feet. He could play, he could play a lot of positions for you. But uh, I think we're really strong inside. We feel we've got five good, strong guys inside, and uh, you know four tackles outside when we got everybody. And uh, but. Love his attitude, and he's gotten, you know, made incredible improvement in a very short window. Again, it's not like he's been uh, going to, you know, camps his whole life uh, as an offensive lineman. You know, so he's really he's learning on the fly, but he's got a great, great natural ability uh, to do that at a really high level. Okay, right side, Ryan Chapman. Uh, we talked to Jalen Redmond yesterday, and he said it was pretty tough for him battling through that concussion. What would you kind of see from him on the practice field after he got back to, to play catch up, and then? what you saw Saturday um, I didn't see a guy that was um, feeling bad for himself or because he wasn't running out there with the ones and so I was glad to see that uh, that he wasn't had a, a pouty face he uh, came and worked and, and tried to get himself in the kind of shape he needed to be so he could compete to his ability and uh, super low maintenance and and work that's that's what I saw and got his opportunities and then we talk about that a lot like some guys moan and groan about whatever opportunities they're not getting instead of focusing on being great and the opportunities they do get and um, and he chose to have the right mindset uh, like a Gavin Freeman you know like a Damon Harmon you know these guys that are whatever role I think Gav, uh, Damon was give or take 16 special teams plays and 17 defensive plays. Man, he kicked butt, so he's going to get a better role. You know, he's going to create, he's created value for himself and, and more opportunity. Jalen, certainly, uh, we, we know what he's capable of if, you know, he's healthy and he's had a, a good amount of time to work. And uh, But he got in and did some, some really good things. He's disruptive and can rush the passer and he's learned how to play better against the run. He's done a nice job. Right, you mentioned Gavin. Was he one of those guys that you, know, you had to dig a little deeper, look under the mattress for when you're bringing him on as a preferred walk-on? Yeah, I mean, again, he's a guy that you didn't have to watch uh, long watching his high school tape. <laughs> he's pretty impressive. And then, um, you know, Matt Wells had actually had him committed at Texas Tech uh, as a uh, as a scholarship player. So they had him at camp and, and did really, really well. And then, of course. I think he committed maybe a Tuesday, and then maybe a week to ten days later, uh, he was let go. So uh, the the next staff, I don't think, recruited him, and so he was a quote unquote free agent. But man, did we get a, a great one? Uh, he's a great kid, man. Just uh, he shows up with the right mindset, attitude. Same guy every day. And again, like I've used the the, the phrase "wide open." Uh, you know, he practices and competes at a very high level. How soon after you saw him in person here, did you think he could? Well, I started asking. So we we getting what do we got involved with? Like I know we got some slots over there. Where's this guy kind of fit in? And um, then I started pecking him away with uh, Demarco because he can return punts. And he's super sure of himself, uh, you know, and really uh, catches the ball with ease as a punt returner. And he's a lot like you see Billy Bowman when he he's like, you know, just twitchy man. It's like. 
You know, it's like, ooh, like when you saw Barnes get that first handoff, you're like, whoa, we were all on the sideline, all of us, I mean, the players are like, whoa, you know? And I don't want you to use this phrase, but not the same guy exactly, you know, different styles, but, you know, when Adrian would run by you, you was like, whoa, the earth would shake. And you're like, son. And, uh, but you had the same, you know, when you watched Gavin compete, uh, it was very, it's like, he's super sudden and explosive. Uh, he's a he's a legit four or five guy, and then he, he plays at that level. You get some guys that run four or five; they don't play. They run four or eight, like they stuck in the mud pulling a concrete truck. So he's a guy that um, you'll create more opportunity for him, and got a great future in front of him. Uh, and I told Demarco, don't ever be afraid. I'm the guy shows that he can do it, man. Don't don't. Oh, he's a freshman, you know. So what? He'll probably surprise you, you know. Put him in there. What's the worst thing that can happen? Muff the punt, they get the ball, we'll stop them. Kick a field goal, let's go. You know, I want to empower our coaches not to be afraid and because sometimes you can coach that into a guy too. You know, uh, he'll, they'll feel that lack of confidence that you have in them. The most powerful words you can say to a guy or make them feel is I believe in you. And so you do that by your actions too as a coach. You know, you have that type of power as a coach. So uh, Gavin's got a great, great future. Uh, in front of him, and uh, we're excited to have him. Okay, last one, left side, Austin Kirkman. Hey, Brent, uh, we've heard over the weeks about mental Mondays. Drake last night obviously talked about turnovers being the focus on Tuesdays. I guess, are there names for other days in the week? And then what's, what was your inspiration behind doing that, and how does that help? Yeah, um, I'll be honest. We, you know, all three head coaches I've worked for have had a, a mindset of helping guys have a, a daily focus. And uh, starting with Coach Snyder. So I just think, again, young people, generally speaking, have a hard time staying focused from, you know, one week to the next, certainly one day to the next. And so helping our guys, you know, kind of zoom in, have a narrow focus on what today's all about and the work that needs to be done. And so, uh, you know, uh, putting a name on it helps the guys lock in. They'll be using that for the rest of their lives. Uh, that's what I know. And uh, that's just how a locker room works and how a team works, so uh, that'll help them in every part of their life. But uh, just being a little more intentional, a little more uh, focused on, on what, you know, the day of the week it is, because you only get, you know, you get everybody in the country get 20 hours a day, uh, or 20 hours a week, rather, um, and you got to make the most of your week. So being efficient and focused and intentional uh, so that you can have a chance to improve and be prepared and ready to play is what it's all about. And everybody's, I love it because everybody in the country is on the same clock. And so our job is to, uh, you know, again, be organized, be detailed, be um, thoughtful of the demands of the players. And, um, and, and also there's a competitive side that says, how can I inspire my guys uh, to do a little more uh, with the same amount of time? How can we motivate them and challenge them? Uh, you know, you can't make somebody do what they don't want to do and you can't want it more than the player wants it for himself. If you have that relationship, uh, it's gonna be very dysfunctional. And you know, they gotta want their success more than the coach could ever want it. And so, uh, you know, helping them focus, um, helping them buy in because of that, and you know, stay in their lane, stay out of the gutter, uh, you know, so they can hit the target. So, what's the target this week? You don't know? Uh, I got a few places actually. All right. Well, the target for for us is to is to beat Kent State, and so what's it going to take? You know, how do how do we? You know, we're not worried about you know Lincoln or uh, the Wildcats or you know Fort Worth or. Dallas, you know, we're focused on Kent State, and 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 so, you know, how how can we get them to focus on on doing all the little things better than everybody else? So that's what it's about. Sooner Scoop HD.